It is now my pleasure to present your class president, Ziad Chuen, to deliver the senior farewell. Ladies and gentlemen of the class of 2009, friends, family, and faculty, thank you all for coming to celebrate the hard work, perseverance, and accomplishments of our senior class, because this truly is a defining moment in our lives. Yes, the economic outlook is bleak and opportunities are scarce, but this has not and will not hinder our extremely successful class that has achieved greatness over the last four years. While we were here, we saw the Spartans rise to victory in the UAA. Our athletics program reached enormous, enormous success. Men's soccer achieved its very first UAA championship and NCAA tournament bid and tied for the highest cumulative GPA of all soccer programs in every division in the country. <laughs> Football dominated its opponents and had two undefeated seasons in a row and still remains the only team in Ohio with a winning overall record against the Ohio State Buckeyes. Cross country, wrestling, both amazing, I could go on. More than ever, we have students going to professional schools, med medical, dental, law, business. And it is only a testament to our unadulterated awesomeness and the fact that we all triumphed in, let's face it, one of the greatest academic institutions in the nation. And for that, we have the faculty and administration to thank, and our parents for supporting us both financially and morally throughout our lives, rather than retiring early to a tropical paradise. <laughs> Speaking of parents, apparently they didn't teach us enough about how we're not supposed to procrastinate. I'm surprised we all made it out here today. As of last week, we still had hundreds of you rushing to get those graduation problems cleared up. And this is for you. Oh, wait. <laughs> Real men of genius. Real men of genius. Today we salute you, Mr. Grad Requirement Procrastinator Guy. For four years your DPR told you it was incomplete, but you didn't know how to decipher the 20-page summary that might as well have been written in Klingon. And just when you've put together the thousand piece puzzle of pure sky, they switch systems just to keep you on your toes. <laughs> Playing a good old fashioned game of graduation chicken never felt so good. A requirement to graduate? Please, you'd rather be rewatching Happy Feet for the third consecutive time or playing a glorified game of tag known as humans versus zombies. So crack open an ice cold beverage, Mr. Clutch because the Hail Mary email you sent your dean last week was just in time. <laughs> I'm probably gonna get in trouble for that. And I'm not one to talk. I finished writing this speech this morning, but I've been thinking about what I'm supposed to talk about for a while. I'm still relatively naive and immature, and I certainly don't believe my life experiences and lessons learned are sufficient to fill a five minute speech. That's why you have wiser and, with the exception of President Snyder, older <laughs> people up here. But I'll leave you with one lesson I've managed to pick up along the way, and that is do whatever makes you happy. Over the four and, okay, we'll do that. Over the four enriching years I've spent here at Case, I've tried to live by this rule. It's what I was told by my advisors and parents when I was deciding my major and when I was ever making key decisions in my life. Do whatever ha makes you happy, they said. Students at Case, despite myths of certain gentlemen's magazine party ratings, know, to ha know how to have fun in one form or another, best exemplified by our obsession with video games and medieval foam battle royales that take place every now and then on campus. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I discovered that this motto has proven to have its own drawbacks. As I matured at Case, I realized that my motto, while it has its merits, needed to be revised and updated. So based on the experiences of me and my fellow classmates over the last four years, 
I've needed to add several caveats to my motto. And starting with freshman year, do whatever makes you happy, but don't leave your expensive bike unattended, and even in broad daylight. And, and I found that out before freshman classes even started. <laughs> don't be closed-minded. Don't skip breakfast. Don't go to bed before 5 AM. Don't restrict yourself to a single clique of friends. Don't watch a single season of 24 in 24 hours. <laughs> Don't argue with the annoyingly stubborn person in your sages class. <laughs> Don't be afraid to ask tons of questions. Don't be afraid to be a leader. And don't, under any circumstances, streak through the late night breakfast. <laughs> and sophomore year rolled around. Do whatever makes you happy, but don't think it's too late to change majors. Don't trust the greenies on test day. <laughs> don't think the snow days are a thing of the past. Don't be too trusting. Don't forget to get involved, but don't only do it for your resume. Junior year, do whatever makes you happy, but don't forget your Sage's portfolio. <laughs> Pags. <laughs> don't forget the early vote. Don't underestimate downtown Cleveland. And don't forget you're human. And for this year, don't go to breakfast when you could be sleeping. Don't be awake past midnight. Don't forget about sleep. And most importantly, don't forget your senior week tickets. Oh yeah. <laughs> and for my latest entry, don't agree to give a speech to thousands of people when you're normally terrified of public speaking. <laughs> woo woo, woo woo. The many exceptions to the rule appear to suggest that maybe doing what makes you happy wasn't conceptually uh, what I thought it meant. I constantly felt like I was too often neglecting the things I enjoyed in life, and for what? It took me four years to figure this out, but I was only thinking in terms of instant gratification, the short-term happiness that flees as quickly as it arrives. I realized that I needed to focus on a greater purpose in my life, a cause or objective that requires continual short-term sacrifices to enhance the meaning and satis satisfaction of one's own existence. I also recognized the importance of enjoying the journey. Perhaps true happiness will come during and after a lifetime and a lifetime of dedication and progress and recognizing the lasting positive influence of your work. So I challenge each and every one of you to reconsider your own understanding of your purpose and to work towards a greater cause and to attain true fulfillment. So allow me to wish you all a lifetime of, of success at Case and remember, mostly do what makes you happy. Congratulations, everybody.